Ronnie Dale, Four Wheeling Australia. Welcome to another episode of Modified. We have an Amarok, finally. And wait till you see what's in the back of this Amarok. It's, uh, it's pretty tricked out, and that's, that's an understatement. Let's get the owner in. Hey, mate, how you going? Joe, how are you? Good. Rightio, mate. Uh, tell us the specs on an Amarok. Now, um, especially with the gearing, it's probably going to surprise a lot of people. It surprises me anyway. Uh, but go for it, mate. It's a Volkswagen Amarok. It's a, um, it's a V6. This is a V6 one. Um, this is the 2017, so this is one of the first ones. Uh, it doesn't have the Ad Blue um, filter system on it that most 2017 units did have. Yeah, it's 180 kilowatts. How many gears is the gearbox? This is a automatic uh, eight speed with no low range. I know a couple of oh, people have really? problems with that, but okay. it, uh, it works fine. I've never had a problem without it. Interesting. No low range, eight gears, which kind of makes up for it then. Correct, yeah. yeah. So which gear is your overdrive? And then you got over, over, and then over, over? <laughs> Mate, it just does its own thing. The system is so smart. I, literally, you just put it in drive and turn the off-road function on, okay. and everything just does itself. Let's dissect this beast, because there's, there's a lot to go through here. ARB bull bar, I see. It's one of the, the new larger pipe ones. I think it's a 63 mil pipe, so when you go get your, your accessory brackets, you've got to get, go get the new. Oh, the thicker ones. The, the, the wider, thicker ones. Um, I've bought a few when I first got the bar and yeah, forked out the money on stuff that doesn't fit, so. Take note then. Yeah, I suppose a lot of them are starting to bring out the thicker bar now, aren't they? Yeah, I actually quite like the look of it. I think it's a little bit more tougher look. Yeah, it does give it a tougher look. You have a sausage maker here. Yeah, I, I heard they call it the, the sausage maker. Um, yeah, look, I do a bit of bit of beach fishing and that sort of stuff, so yeah. works wonders for me, that thing. Awesome. But I normally do keep a bit of a dummy rod in there. Um, I heard you don't get sort of too much trouble if there's a rod in it ah, from, yeah. the, from, the, uh, from the cops, so. Okay. The reason why they call these sausage makers, uh, and it's the paramedics that call them, is when they impact the person. Just, I know I'm going to get the question, that's why I just mentioned that there. But, all right. <laughs> So fishing rod holders, four of them. Yep. Do you have four fishing rods? You probably do if you fish a lot. Uh, I do, mate. Yeah, I got uh, got about ten times that amount. So, <laughs> Bush Ranger winch. Yeah, so that's. Um, I believe they've just brought this one out. Um, I got this one when I got the bull bar. It's the ten thousand pound uh, Bush Ranger. It's nylon with the uh, with the flip up number plate. Cool. I've pulled. Uh, to be honest, I've pulled more trees out than car out of bogs. It. Uh, it, it does do wonders. Okay. More than enough that I need for this car anyway. How many pounds did you say it was? 10,000. It's a remote one too, so there's no wires if you don't want it. Aha. Uh -huh. And you just put a remote in here? Or yeah, it's, so it's if, the, if the remote goes flat, you just plug a, a wire into there and run it into the cab if you need to. No side steps. And it's no rebar because it is a tray back. And yes. uh, I can't wait till we get the back yeah, of it. There's can't so wait much to going show on. You that. Recovery point wise? Well, look, I've got the factory uh, sort of strap down point. Look, I know you can't strap off this, completely understand that. Mm. Um, but right now, because it's the new V6, the, I'm, only, I'm very limited to where I can actually get some, uh, some recovery points. And the ones that I can get them, they're just so expensive, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So um, I've just chosen to leave the factory one in. Look, I'll only ever snatch off it if, if I'm, you know, got the tide coming or something. I, I really have to. And, I take the right precautions to do that. So road safe, haven't even made any yet? Look, they have, um, but you've got to drill a few holes into the chassis to, to oh, do really? it. Oh, really? Yeah, so I've, uh, uh, there, is a, there is a company over the East Coast, um, next, next 4x4, I think they're called. Um, they they do a good one. Do yeah, they, they've got one that goes straight on. You don't oh. have to do any sort of real mods other than doing the actual, the notch into the, the protector okay. bar here that came with the bull bar. Mm. Um, but other than that, they're, they're the best th thus far that has come out with that system. This bash plate is with the bar? So all that mm. comes with the bar. Um, it does go a little bit under. I do have issues uh, with clearance with my fuel tank and that underneath it. I've just got the standard uh, Volkswagen plastic 80 litre tank. It is the lowest thing on this car. Um, so I am very conscious of that when I do go off-road, so. And it sits to one of the sides? It does sit to one of the sides. Um, it's probably one of the big downfalls for this car for me is that. Make sure I have a mental note of that when I go to line up for something. Yeah, especially if it's a rocks. Yeah. Correct, yeah. We're on to these two things on the roof here. We'll start with the roof rack and then we'll go on to this, that's a tent, right? Yeah, pop up. Pop up yeah. sleeper. 
I'm yelling because I'm far away from the camera, but I don't have to yell. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Rhino rack. Just a generic Rhino rack. There is a version that can go wider on these models. Um, I chose to just step it in, so my shovels and anything else that I attach to it um, yeah. will sort of just tuck in. On there, I've just got my eBay special Max tracks. Yeah, they're just strapped down there, and I normally just put a little solar panel up there when I travel and pull up for a little while. But I've got a well. one that just moves down and just plugs into a point here. Oh yeah. Um, and then that way, if it's ever shady, if the car wants to be in the shade, I can. that's got a 10 metre lead, so I can just run that out. 10 metre lead, that's probably your minimum too, isn't it? Yeah. Here's your shovel. Yeah, we should see some use. That's, uh, unfortunately, this, this doesn't do too well on the beach, the tyres that I've got. So that shovel has been used quite a lot on the beach. Okay. This is a tent, right? Yeah, so this is just a, a, a pop-up um, sleeper. Basically, you undo the, uh, the six clips, three of the side. It pops up, and in there, um, I've added a mattress protector, as well as just got the pillows and blankets. I've added in some USB points, charging points, light, and a couple fan points. Pop straight up? Yeah, or? just pop straight up, and that's it. You literally unclip it, it'll just pop up. Mate, I've got to say that this is one of the best things that I've done to this car. Okay. It has uh, made my life a lot easier, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. Nice. Do you know how much it weighs? Uh, look, I think it was about 60 kilos. This is quite a, this isn't a good brand name one or anything like this. This is quite a, a budget one. Mm. Um, I think it ranged around the 1800 odd dollars. I've had issues with it, but it's, I guess you pay for what you get. If you go cheap, you'll, you'll, you'll have yeah. a short life. So look, one day I'd love to get, the, get, get some good ones, but for now that's what we've got. Just name two issues you had with it and how you fixed it. Uh, look, all the zippers and the material, all that, it's just all, it's all very cheap Chinese stuff. So okay. um, I've had to just get Velcro and put Velcro in instead of zippers and that sort of stuff, um, as well as how they've created the, the floor to make it strong it means that you feel all the ribs. So yeah. whereas, um, and that's how they, they get the strength with the cheaper material, if that makes mm. sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's good to know for other mm. people as well. Mm, definitely. Yeah. So would you recommend for people, you know, on a low budget just to save up and, and get the better one or would, would you say... Would Definitely. This, I would. I, I think this is one thing that you don't want to scrimp on. Is your comfort. Yeah. And, and sleeping. <laughs> and I've had issues with cracking and, you know, clips coming off as I'm driving. It's uh, Okay. It, it has probably been a, my, my worst nightmare. Mm. But it's the best thing as well. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Yeah, that's yeah. A, it's a yin and yang. It's, uh, it, it, it's awesome, but it's a, it's a headache. Okay. Yeah. I well, appreciate your honesty. <laughs> Not many people will be that honest about something like that. Mm. Yeah. Lights and communications. I'll we'll start with the comms. Are these both UHFs? No, so this one is the Selfie Go. This big one here is a Selfie Go uh, phone range extender. And then that one is just my uh, UHF. You find uh, the cell phone extender does work? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I actually, um, I actually rate it quite high, um, that system. It, it is quite expensive, but it's, it does work. And it, if you've got one bar, it will produce full bars. That's the thing. Oh, really? Yeah, if you've got no bars, it won't give you any more bars. Mm. But once you've you, you got it the better. one, it will make it to full bars. Nice. Yeah, everywhere we go, um, normally I do a lot of runs from here to Jero. I, I never drop out at all. So. Mm. Whereas previously, I drop out at least 50% of the way. Yeah, okay. So if you don't want to drop out, get one of those, but if you do want to drop out, don't get one of those. <laughs> I like dropping out. <laughs> you had Chef, we just mentioned, how many dBs is this one? I actually, I don't know. It, um, it looks like a 4.5 or a 3. I don't know. I actually got that as a gift, so um, I just basically rocked up one day and she was on there. So, But it works well. It works very well, yeah. These HID lights? Yeah, HID. Uh, they're the 35 watt, I believe. They are bright. To be honest, I don't need any more. Like, I don't need to go to full LEDs or anything crazy like that. Um, for what I do and the amount of highway driving I, I actually do, I think they're fine. Hmm. Um, I do have the, the light bar, 42 inch up there as well. Yeah, just notice that. Um, you wouldn't use that in the highway, would you? No, no, I, I definitely try not to. Into the Correct, yeah. yeah. That's more of just sort of, sort of night tracks. Bush light. Yeah, just a bit of... Um, slow driving. Yeah, the more look than, than, I, than usability of it. Yeah. Um, but you do use it? Yeah, I do, I do. But it's, it's one of those things where the, the amount of times a year that I go through driving through the bush, it's, it's rare. It is rare, but okay. it does get used. No props. And then I just spray painted everything black. So what you can see on the back of the awning there, I've made that half black so there's no reflection and no reflection off me, uh, my aerial for my, my aerial, sorry, my, hmm. 
my um, sand, sand. yeah, sand. So it's like a matte finish too? Yeah, it's just a quick spray job. Mm. The old Bunnings cheap $2 can. Let's start with the black donuts. BFGs, all terrains, are they the KO? Yeah, they yeah, are the, the KO2s. KO Mate, these are the biggest ones that I could get put onto this car with the, with the rims, the standard rims. I know that I could uh, get different rims, get the offsets to make it work, but we'll take a shot of the front there, but the tire is literally five mil off from hitting all, this, all the arms on the, on the front there. So that's why I've chosen these tires, um, of this size, I should say. Um, mm. I've had these tires before and they're great. I've never, ever had a problem with these or a blowout. Okay. And I've done serious Ks. So. so you had these on a previous vehicle? Yeah, I've had three sets of patrols before. I've had these, so. 265, 65, R16. Mm -hmm. It's still a decent sized tyre. Yeah, look, it's still a decent sized tyre, but, but... It's, it's the biggest you can go without having scrubbing and... It's the biggest mm. I can go with these standard rims. So mm. I would like to go bigger. I do have issues with the with a bit of beach work because I've got the weight. I think I just need that little bit bigger of footprint on the ground um, oh, while yeah. I'm going, going through the beach. So perhaps like a 17 inch rim with a bit more... Yeah, I am limited with the... Uh, with the, the brake caliber. The brake caliper, so... I'll, um, mm. So 18 is the smallest you can go? Correct, yeah, correct. Uh, that's what I believe anyway, so I've got to do a bit more research. Um, there is a couple Facebook pages for the Amarox, and there's a lot of information up there. i just got to go through it and see what's real and what's not. How many cars have you done on this set? I've done 44,000. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that is pretty impressive. Yeah, so say. I go in and do the five-wheel rotation, not the four-wheel, because that's a waste of time, mm -hmm. I think. Um, I go get the five-wheel rotation every 10,000, and if you stick by their book, these things go and go and go. And you got the similar amount of Ks out of the previous ones? Yeah, I think the previous ones, I, by the time I changed them, it was about nearly 90,000. Wow. Yeah, so, okay. and I do heaps and heaps of Ks on the road. So, look, I make sure my tyre pressure's right when I am driving around. I don't go on the bitumen with them too low because they just, they will shred up and go to In other words, I mean, these tyres are obviously good but you obviously look after your tyres. Correct. So Correct. if you look after your tyres, you research about your tyres, they're going to last you a lot longer. Correct. And the warranty's there if I need it, so. Mm. And they're not cheap. Good tyres are not cheap. Correct, correct. Let's move on to the suspension then. So I've got a two inch lift. It's the ARB Old Man Emu. So what I got on this was the 450 constant load on the back with the Old Man Emu shocks at the front. This is a GVM um, upgrade package without the GVM certificate. So because the car's so new, they mm. actually haven't bring out the GVM compliance yeah. plate with these yet. So I've been told that if I get the package and they've installed it, they've inspected it, I can go back through and get the plate, and the pay, GVM. Pay for the plate. Correct, yeah. I ended up getting five Your inches load. when I did the lift, but that's because of how poor the standard suspension handled the weight. Wow, okay. Yeah, so I got uh, Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So standard suspension was sagging. So from where it sagged, to now you got five inches. Current, yeah, correct, I got five inches. So I had some major scrubbing issues um, with, this, uh, with this angle there. So mm. yeah, so I had to go out and get that fixed straight away because I just couldn't do anything. Before we go inside the main feature of this vehicle, we're going to look at the exterior. Full motor bodies. That was the first tray I ever had a my cruiser. Yep. How do you rate their tray and stuff? Mate, I love it. It's not a little bit of dust or water gets in there. Um, they, they've got a, um, I forget what they call it, a mulligan um, air inlet up, up top there. So it lets oh, some air in and it- Positive pressure. Yeah. Um, so I've never had an issue with it. I actually quite rate these very, very, very high. Um, they do come with drawers and other stuff um, at the moment. I actually got the drawer infill bits and sliders put in, but no drawer. It's, it's quite expensive to get the drawer, so I decided to, to opt in and get all the all that put on now and then put the drawer on when I can afford it. Um, but yeah, mate, she, she works well and she's not too much, there's not too much weight in it. I think it was about 160 kilos more than the tub. Oh, okay. Yeah, empty, of course. Your water tank on either side? Yeah, so that's my shower water tank. I've got that hard wide plumbed in, so the door opens up and it, uh, it's a shower. Um, and the other side, I've got another 35 litre, which is the drinking water. So that's for my Manager 30 system that I run. Um, so that's just the, uh, the caravan plug. So when I pull up to power anywhere, I can charge the system if I need to. And that's the shower button to, you just okay. push that to turn on the shower. Nice. 
you got a shovel hole under here. So you got a shovel up there now, but yeah. you used to have it down here. So I've got a little table that when I do a bit of beach fishing, I stick the table in there, crank it up, and it just comes out. It's a bit of a cutting board. Um, it's just a makeshift thing I've done. Nice. Um, as well as, you know, when I'm using the shovel at the campsite, I can just stick it in there instead of putting it back up there and mm. gets it out of the way so no one trips over it. Anything else underneath the trailer? You got your spare tyre still? Is that the factory mounting point? Yes, that's the factory one. So that as well, um, the good thing about going to these tyres was that's the maximum size tyre I could go in there. So mm. um, it just fits. Um, we've probably got about two centimetre clearance to the exhaust. This whole canopy, it opens up three ways. Correct. So I, I went the Which, three door one. Where should we start? Um, look, Which one should we open first? Look, this one's the, the most simplest one on this side. This is just my cargo area. Um, and then the rest gets really high tech from there on in. Okay. I reckon we start at a high tech way and then... No, done. Before we go inside, you have a panel on both sides. There's nothing real special with these ones. These are just ones from J-Car. They're uh, 120 watt. They go straight to my um, BMS manager, manager 30. They do okay. They're not the best. They just don't give it, I think, the, the oomph that you know a, a mm. good charger needs. So um, I've, got, I've got a great charger, but not the best solar panels. I do have a, uh, uh, an auxiliary one that I plug in, goes out yep. 10 metres, and that just gives it what it needs. You may find it's because it can't let any heat out. Yeah, I, I have been told that, which, mm. um, which yeah, is a factor. So I, I do have insulation on the back side to try and cool the actual panel itself. I do find it, it doesn't heat up as much now because I've got insulation on the inside. Let's open it up, eh? Yep. I've seen the back, but I haven't seen the yeah. side yet. So Ooh, that's that. TV. Yeah. <laughs> Just put in a, uh, a little TV in with a couple doorstop rubber brackets for a bit of movement. Um, it's got a DVD player in it as well. Oh yeah. Um, mate, I've had I've had that thing for about four or five years. I've gone from car to car with that. It's it was eighty dollars from from Kmart or something like that, and uh, it's, nice. it's worked the whole way. So you bring a TV to the bush. You watching the footy or what are you watching? Mainly, that's what it's for, mate. I'm, I mean, I, so it's for the footy. Yeah, yeah, mate. It's NR, I'm, I'm a, I'm a cowboy supporter. Oh, NRL. rugby. Yeah, so, um, you know, sorry, I don't, don't watch a bit of AFL, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that, that's mainly for that. And look, it, it's good when, uh, when we go out. I, I tend to go out for a, a month at a time when I go, so it's mm. not bad to have a bit of a movie night with the missus and sit back and yeah, it's. Uh, but it's a, it definitely gets a gets a few looks at the caravan park when you pull up watching a movie, so, yeah. Well, most caravans have TVs too, so. Yeah. <laughs> Let's run through the drawers. Oh, it has just magically appeared in my hand. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's begin. Yeah, so I guess we can start at the back there. We've got the, uh, got the fridge. Uh, this is an 80 litre, slides right out. Oh, look at that. Open it up. Dual compartment, I'll... eh? Yeah, dual compartment, fridge, freezer. Um, my, uh, I've been warned against these sort of fridges, but mate, I've, I love it. I've never had a drama. Can you choose which one is fridge or freezer? You can. It actually runs on an app, so I can actually sit in the car as I drive and monitor and change change the temperatures and move it from fridge to freezer. Oh, no way. Um, so when I know that I'm pulling up to a campsite soon, I set it to freezer and get those beers nice and cold. So it works well. These are ideas, man. <laughs> what do you have in your hand? Yeah, so this just this basically sits on the slide as well and um, just basically just clicks in under here as a... Uh, it's a little, little lunch table. Oh, so while, only while the fridge is in though, right? Yeah, correct. It, that's the only downfall from it. I, I, I was planning to get a slide with, uh, with the, the slide out table, yeah. but uh, I had height limits, so. Can you open the fridge with this in? Yeah, so once that's in the spot, I can just slide it out and get to the fridge that I need to. Oh, so you can still use this part? Yeah. So you can just open that one compartment, the, right? Uh, so the idea is, this is the fridge side, so all your sandwich stuff, all that stuff, you can still use it and chop it yeah. in. And then I've got this table there. Oh, nice. So you got a cutting board that just fits in? Yeah, so cutting board, it's recessed in, and then I can pop it off and clean it. Oh. You made this yourself? Yeah, this is all made by me. I've made a few for a few blokes these now. Um, a few cashies. DIY. Yeah. Handy thing about being a chippy. You'll probably hear the fridges running a lot today. It's because it's 41 degrees. Yeah, just clicked over. Is it still 41? Yeah. That's what it says here. 41 degrees. Welcome to Australia. Um, so yeah, Good up shot. here, so this is just my kitchen stuff. So on the top, this is all my uh, all my utensils and stuff, cups, plates, all that sort of stuff. 
been rattled around a bit from the drive-in. Oh yeah, so it's kind of like a wine glass, but it's not? Yeah, and it doesn't break. Where do you get those from? Um, I think we got them from um, Snowy's, a website, a website on, uh, called Snowy's. Cool. We, we actually got most of our stuff from there. Um, it's just, it's really cheap. And then this one's just our food, and we keep our, uh, our, stale, our stove and jet oil in there. And then the bottom one's the chopping board. So how long did it take you to knock this up? It took me two days to, to knock this side up. Um, the other sides were a little bit longer. The hardest thing about this is making drawers that they are hard to get the drawers right and make them fit. So I've had many attempts now and I think I've got it down pat um, and it works well. Mm. Um, and everything's just straight from bunning. So, yeah, you know, any man, any man could make these. And anything that goes wrong, you just go any hardware then? Correct, correct. Two batteries in here. Yep, so I got two 125 or 120, sorry, amp hour batteries. They're paired up to, um, to give me the, the 240 amp hours. Um, I got that fully insulated around there, so so does the roof, just to keep all that heat out. Oh, so, like you were saying about the solar panels. Yeah, so that's just that air cell um, house yeah. insulation that I've uh, I've just glued on there and put. Um, well, it does a good job, eh? It does. It it really does. If you touch the outside, it's uh, it definitely drops the uh, temperature a lot. Oh yeah, <laughs> that makes a big difference. What is this? Is this a tent? That's my home base, basically. I pop that out it's it's six and a bit uh, by six and a bit meters goes up about 2.4 um, and we just set that up pull most of the stuff up and that's our home base and we can go off fishing and stuff all day and come back and at least we've got somewhere to call home if it does downpour and then this is the brain center and some more storage and chairs and stuff I like how you got it like this so eh? most people have to go from one side of the car to the other side of the mm. car. Yeah, so this side is just sort of my, I can open it up, pull out the chairs and tables if we're just pulling up for a few hours. Nice, quick, easy. I've got all the extra water I can swap out. I do have my Honda generator that I put in here as well that fits. Um, that runs the air con that I have for the rooftop sleeper. The air con? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is just all our water tanks and spare stuff on this side. I and think we need to do a Q and A in the air con, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then this is the the brains of it all. This is um, the Manager 30. Um, mate, this thing is magic. I've never, I don't think I've ever plugged in the 240 um, to to charge those batteries. It does that. It does that good of a job. Mm. Um, and then this is my um, Wi-Fi camera. So I've got three cameras on the back, um, and that does the Wi-Fi, so I can keep an eye on um, on my boat and stuff if I'm in asleep in, in my rooftop tent. Got the inverter, um, that's a screen for it, and then that's just my charging station. It's my um, handheld, uh, VHF and UHF, so that goes in my boat. Ah, okay, that's so interesting. It's, a, it's a, the new ones that they made, it's the dual one. Um, so I can, you know, call the Coast Guard if I need to, but as well I can communicate with the, the missus when she's reversing up the, the, the boat trailer at the boat ramp. Is it waterproof though? Yeah, completely waterproof and floats. <laughs> and floats, yeah. that's a bonus. <laughs> Not tested yet, but... And then this is just my drone battery station where I just charge everything here. Some outlets. This is my uh, my lights and my shower light. Um, and then these are the remotes for the lights and the aircon. Very neat, mate. Very neat. Oh, there's another light here. Eh? Yeah. So that's a standard one that comes with the bull. I had a fire extinguisher, so it was only uh, about a month and a half ago my car got stolen. I got quite lucky where they stole it, stole some accessories off it, um, ditched it somewhere to come back the next night and I managed to stumble across it and find it again. So, oh, because you're out on the lookout. Yeah, so we, uh, yeah, we ended up getting a phone call saying that they found uh, my briefcase with my business cards and mm. sure enough I went to go pick that up and my car was ditched in the bush just up the road. So we managed to get it back before they cleaned me out of everything. So That's lucky, mate. Yeah, very, very. Bloody car hoos, eh? <laughs> And then all the fuses and everything. So these are little vent clips that clip off and then you can get to all the fuses. Oh, nice. I was actually well, wondering what those things are. Yeah. Oh, is your trip switch? Yeah, so that's just a major trip switch. I figured, you know, the amount of times that I need to get to it, that is just an air vent for this and there's another one on the back. That actually unscrews and I can just pop that off and you can see all the wiring in there. Where do you get all this stuff from? Um, most of it's from Bunnings and J-Car. 
just the one screw. I've got to put a clip on it. I've got one of those little elastic clippies that I'm going to put on it. But, and then you can just get to everything. Oh, nice. That's very neat, mate. What do you do for a living? Chippy. I'm building consultant, but yeah, chippy by trade. Nice. Cargo side. Yes. Let's go. So this is where I've uh, got I'm all impressed. the gear. So I I literally have everything in here, and, and this holds everything that I ever need. Um, you know, I pull all these out. This is basically it's all color coded. So these are our our clothes and that sort of stuff. This is all our recovery and sort of camping gear. This is food and just the other bits and bobs, a couple of bits of tools and that sort of stuff. Um, I got it strapped in so we can do a bit of off roading without uh, without damaging anything. Anyone with OCD, in. I think they're okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you, you can ask my missus that uh, I've, oh, got it. I've got the OCD. Hang on, sticker's missing. <laughs> oh, no. That's going to drive them nuts. <laughs> it's going to drive them nuts. Yeah. Oh, this is really neat, man, and really secure. Too. Yeah, mate, and these are, these. I think these were $4 from Bunnings, these strap systems. Um, oh, really? Yeah, these little clipping systems, mate, they are great. They, uh, I think they're rated for nearly two ton too, so obviously whatever screw you put down, but, um, and they're, mm. And they're great because I can, it can quickly clip off, but then these just pop off and you've only got that sitting there. Ah, show us again. And then yeah, it's okay. just one clip on the side, pops out. Yeah, that's cool because otherwise you'd have to undo this every time. Yeah, so, which isn't the, the end of the world. And then I just strap it up and pull it in tight. Very nice. Put the, uh, the, the strip lights, which is just a clip up here. That's right round. So I've got two on the other side as well, one on the back and then two here. Um, it's all in struts. I normally store a bit of, bit of gear through there. But anything light just goes up here, right? Correct, yeah. So that's all the light stuff. That's, um, that's all my spices and salts and that sort of stuff for our, our bush cooking. There's a special case up there, isn't it? Yeah, it is, mate, yeah. <laughs> and then that's just all our beach umbrellas. That's where the solar panel normally sits, it just folds up in there. Okay. And then that's the, uh, the little vent that I was talking about that lets the, uh, the air in to pressurise the, the back. Off of there, yeah. Yeah, right. righto, there's, there's no dust here. Right above you is the, uh, is the shower. <laughs> so that little uh, orange thing is the little catch can, so the water that is left in the little bit of pipe that... Um, can you run it? Yeah, yeah, so it's just a little turn-on valve here, and then this is the shower button just here. Oh yeah. Does the job. <laughs> That's hot water, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... That's off 40 degrees. <laughs> I don't have it on a hot water system, so the idea was that... You don't um, need it today. Yeah, well, that's correct. I, I mainly go up north, so I don't really need it, but on the days that I do, I make sure that this side's parked on the afternoon sun, mm. so the solar panel can get the sun, the camp on that side's all shaded, mm. and the water heats up in the afternoon sun, so... Um, what do you do for privacy? Uh, that's my next thing. I've got I to gotta think of something. I, I did actually make up a hula hoop shade cloth thing. Um, but the wind took it? Yeah, it didn't work. I spent $50 and it was a great idea, I thought. And yeah, it, it lasted about 30 seconds. So that went straight in the bin. Um, so I'll have to come up with something. Yeah. Any ideas, let me know, please. It's all right if you're on a boys trip because if anyone steps around, it's their problem, not yours. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's the way I look at <laughs> but it. But if you're at a caravan park or something and you... Yeah, you need some, yeah, yeah, you you know, you're kids. Or, or the kids out or yeah, something. Yeah. Or these kids around here, it's probably not a good thing there. No, no, that's yeah. right. <laughs> it's just, they could turn really badly. Their own fault, I say, so. <laughs> well, there's something really cool going on in here. So let's just open the door and have a look. All right. <laughs> My little dog jail. So that's basically... Paddy uh, wagon. Yeah. <laughs> so this basically folds down. That's a little step for him to get in and out. And the door just clicks open. Just stays there and that's his little home away from home. How cool is that? And then there's a cage on the other side he can stick his head through. Yeah, correct. So it's just got a little clip. I unclip it. Folds down. It acts like a little basket when he's not in the car. And when he is, he pops his head out and we say good day to him. Feels a bit alone, but... It, yeah, it's got his, it's got fans, it's got lights, it's, it's got its own little shelf on top where I put all his dog food and all his little collars and stuff. And I and it's built in a way that I can actually leave this door open, lock up the car, and no one can get into the car. They can't unlock, ah. they can't do anything. So yeah. um, I normally just leave latch this in to make sure it doesn't shut. Yeah. And um, 
yeah, Mac, my dog, will just stay in there all day. We can piss off, go fishing all day, and come back, and he'll be he'll be up there. And the good thing is he can get away from snakes, animals, that sort of stuff, if he needs to, and jump mm. up um, up there. Yep. Or go, yeah, go for go for a nap. Yeah. Whatever. Mate, you are an odd ears, man. And it's a hat holder. Yeah. <laughs> a little so goodies. Cool. Apparently, there's a guy driving from Melbourne to Perth to get one of these made. Albany. Oh, Albany. Albany. I put some Melbourne, right? No, Albany. I was gonna say that's that's keen. <laughs> that's too keen. <laughs> The Yamarok power plant. There's not too many mods going on here, but what we can talk about is your fuel economy, yep. the power, and how you're going without low range. And we'll start with start with your fuel capacity first. 80 litres is a standard on these. The book says it uses anywhere from eight to nine per hundred. Um, I'm currently getting somewhere between 11, 11 or 12, but keep in mind I have put a bit of accessories with wind up top there, so. Yeah, just screw true. Yeah, and I've got, I carry a lot of constant weight now, so. Mm. Um, I, when I do tow my three ton boat, I probably get up to about 16 litres to the 100. It does good, it does good. It's not too bad, yeah. you're towing a big boat, you've got, all, you've got all the weight on the car, that's actually not too bad. Mm. I think most vehicles that, if they tow a big caravan or a big boat, because your boat's pretty big, right? Correct, yeah. You, they'll be looking at 20, some even 25, 30. Wow, okay. You know, yeah. uh, Y62, you can get up to about 25 to 30 litres per 100, Oof. towing a big caravan or boat. Yeah. So look, the, the fuel wise, I, I, I do want to get a, I do want to get a, a longer range tank, but right now, because the car's so new, mm. not many people make the tanks for these yet. So um, that's probably my biggest drama with this car is all the mods and stuff. It's mm. I, I got to get other ones and make them try and make them fit. Or you do have a lot of space under your tray, though. I do. Yeah, I do. Oh, you save enough for a draw? No, I, I've, I've decided I'm just going to make up my own sort of poly tank. I'll go get a poly tank and make up my own sort of dual dual tank system. Okay. Um, for I'm fuel or water? F for both, really. I'm mm. going to do both. So I'll probably just do another 80 litre of water and maybe another 100 litres of uh, of fuel, and I think and that will do it. me. Your batteries are run to the back. The lead will go to the back to the BMS. Yep. And then the BMS30, power that, send power to the batteries. Correct. Yep. It's, it, it's very simplistic up here. I've just got the one going straight to the back and the rest go to the winch. Mm. Um, I, 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 yeah, I've chosen to do it that way because you, you want to keep that heat away from all your, all your accessories, let them do what they do. Um, the only other thing I got here is the, uh, the switch. So with these, they've got a, with these winches, they've got a remote uh, winch. So the remote doesn't turn on until you turn this on. Oh, you switch it there. Okay. Yes, um, it's just a safety factor. So you know, someone's not sitting on the remote and that thing starts winding in. Oh, yeah. So it's got eight gears in automatic, right? Correct. Yeah. No low range. Correct. Do you think that might be part of the the sand issue you're having, or? Um, look, I I don't think I do because um, I think my sand issue is the the sheer weight that I have mm. on this car um, and the, the, the and size, small footprint. yeah, and the small footprint that I get, even when I lower the tires right down, uh, I still think that the, it's the footprint that's my problem and the weight. Um, I th it's got more than enough power. I, the, the reason I chose not to chip it or anything like that, it does, towing my boat, I can overtake a truck, a road train, and you know, doing 140, 160 if I need to, and there's still pedal there. Mm. Um, it does everything I need. I know you can chip these to their eyeballs and tune them right up, but for me, I just don't need it. Yeah. It yeah. does what I need. Oh, that's a good approach. More, yeah. More reliable too. Look, I do miss the low range butt. Um, I do miss that sort of low range feeling when you're sort of yeah. crawling everywhere. Yeah, like, yeah, now we're low range. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, to get that feeling when you, I do miss that feeling, but I don't need it, I don't think. I, mm. It just does what it, it does. And the system is very smart. I lock the off-road in and the system just does everything itself. It's, uh, it auto brakes when I'm going down hills. It just does everything. In the Amarok. Yep. So when you're sitting here, do you feel like a rock? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, definitely not. Um, definitely, definitely not. Is that a rear camera? Yeah, so it, uh, oh, it it's the rear view mirror. So I've got three cameras on the back. Um, one's the Wi-Fi camera, so I can see that at any time. Mm -hmm. um, then I've got just the rear view and a front camera. So it uh, records front and back. 
Um, it has, to be honest, the, the day I got it is when my car got stolen and I videotaped the whole thing. I've got okay. full footage of the kids stealing my car and oh, wow. and I, I knew exactly what they did with the car when they stole it. So I wasn't too, I, I, it, it was a, it relaxed me a bit when I, when yeah. I saw the two hours of video clips because they didn't do anything. They just drove around and went over a couple of speed bumps fast. So you could see the whole footage of everything they did? Yeah. Wow. And them talking, the conversations they had the whole time. Oh, wow. So yeah. all that went to the cops, I take it? Yeah, it all went to the cops. Um, yeah, the, they know exactly who they are, but they can't, um, they can't get them because the cameras weren't clear enough on their face. So, oh. Yeah. So not enough evidence, apparently. So we'll see. Right. I run the HEMA maps on that. Um, Is that the old iPad? Look, that's that's probably about three or four years old. Um, the the screen's quite scratched up now. It's got a bit of a, a glass um, cover on it, a plastic cover. But yeah, I just run the HEMA maps on that, and um, yeah, I'll do all my movies and stuff on that. And I've just got that on my little holder that I've retrofitted on the dash. And then when I don't use it, I normally just sit it there or sit it up there in the little shelf I've made on this. And it fits perfectly. Yeah, it doesn't slide forward, and it. It's got its own little charging point there. This this has three um, cigarette points up the front here. Nice. So um, it's real good for just charging everything. GME with all the functions on the handheld. Yep. Um, so I've got the uh, the main controller underneath the dash there, and then I've got the extension speaker. I'm quite deaf, the missus tells me. So um, <laughs> I got this so I can I can hear us hear her clearly when she's uh, she's got the two way handheld. Voltmeters? Yeah, so that runs the, uh, the, I just keep an eye on the car and keep an eye on the back batteries. Um, they're always on constantly, they don't draw too much. And then I've got all of my accessory, um, these are all the ones that I've stuck in myself. So. Um, oh wow, so these look factory. Yeah, so Amarok's really good with that, The all these spots here are spares, mm -hmm. and all down here are spares and here. Um, the switches are about 25 to 30 dollars and um, you can get them all named and they look they look factory there. Yeah, and you order them from? You can order them, I, I got mine from ARB in Osborne Park, um, but yeah, you can go straight on uh, straight on the web and um, just get these delivered straight to you for even cheaper, around the $18 when you get them direct. Wow, that's and they'll, amazing. And they'll custom label it too. That's awesome. So whatever you want and there's enough there for everything. So I control all the work lights, the light bar and the spotlights here. Mm. And that's a uh, rear diff lock? Yes, yeah, so that's the rear diff lock. Uh, that's to turn the um, the traction control off. And then that's that off-road function I was telling you about. So one Crawl that's on. Downhill. Yeah, and it, like I said, it just does everything. It breaks. Um, I do find it a little annoying sometimes um, because it breaks for me when I don't want it to break. But apparently it's smarter than me, so it knows when to break. <laughs> so. <laughs> and this is the, uh, the other side of the dog cage. So that comes down and it's a bit of a basket for us when he's not in there. But... He comes out and says good day. So when you're in a doghouse, you're correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't fit in it, so she can't put me in it. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I see what you've done there. Yeah. <laughs> Basket behind us is a holder for other things. Yeah. So that's where I normally put some of. I got a couple of iPads and that sort of stuff that go up there as well. Mm. Um, and then I've got a charging point up there, so we can charge from up there. And then all the fans and everything are on this side for the dog dog cage. Awesome. Very neat, mate. Yeah. Impressed. Q&A, my fine people. How's the heat, eh? Yeah, no, it's, it's getting there. I've, uh, I think I've drunk about five or six litres of water, I reckon. If I've got any left, that's for sure. It's, it's good beer drinking weather, but you'd, you'd, be, you'd be gone. You'd be, you'd oh, be using a chair like this, <laughs> I reckon. They're yeah, good chairs, eh? Yeah. So while we're setting up the camera and that, we've just been... Well, I've been mucking around with this chair. This is one of my favourite chairs I've ever sat in and modified. And I've sat in it for, what, two minutes, three minutes? I like it. Bought it for 45, I'll sell it to you for 80 if you want. <laughs> no, you're right, mate. <laughs> um, they store pretty big, though, eh? Yeah, that's the drama. They, they do store... Uh, I don't know, I think I've got a little, a little gap for it for about that much mm. by the width of it. And I store two sides on top of each other. All right. Well, we'll see if we can fit this somewhere. Not this one, I'll buy one. I won't take yours, don't <laughs> worry. Why did you choose the Amarok? You had two patrols beforehand, right? Yeah, I've had patrols literally since I was able to drive. Um, I had a lot of stuff go wrong on my patrols, so I wanted to go something different, and this for me was the different. 
I just didn't want the same old Cruiser or the same old Hilux that um, I guess all of my friends had. Mm. So I decided to go something a little bit different. I heard some good stuff about the Amarox. Um, I know they have issues, but as well as every I know issues. every does, everyone does. Um, so I thought that, yeah, it, I got it for a good price and um, made it, it, it ticked all my boxes. It fundamentally just ticked all my boxes. So I said, why not? Something different. Fair enough. And I suppose you went into the vehicle knowing the exact problems that it might have. Correct. Um, a lot of people don't do that. I knew the pros and cons of most of the models. I, I, I'm, I'm OCD, you know, I've got to tick all the boxes. I've got I to, can tell. Inside. Yeah, I've got to <laughs> do the research. And like we just said, mate, it, they've, they've all got problems. Mm. This just for me had the ones that I could probably fix myself or I could monitor myself. What's your ideal camping place and scene? My you do a lot ideal, of fishing, right? Yeah, so I reckon it'd be on a on a creek creek bed, uh, it's on the side of a creek, um, you know, where you can catch a good barramundi. Somewhere I can put the uh, I got a little bass boat that I can put in and out, so there's someone get good for that, and somewhere I can fish, and mm. you know, the missus and the dog can be happy. Then that's my ID spot, and that's probably I'm talking probably Cairns or something like that up up through Ingham, Halifax, up okay. through North Queensland. That's my ideal spot. Is that where you're? Best tr mem memorable trips are from the East Coast up that way. Definitely, definitely. Uh, up through uh, Lucinda, Halifax, Cardwell, all those sort of trips through there. I've done many houseboat trips and that through there as well. So it's that place is just absolute paradise. Something different. Yeah, next week I'm moving actually. So are you really? I'm moving to Darwin. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Mm. So you don't like this dry heat? You want humidity? Yeah. I, I said, <laughs> oh, why not 41? It's not hot enough. So I'll go up to where it gets to 48 most days. So. Yeah, and humid. Yeah. What's your three best mods on this vehicle? Three best mods would definitely be the overall canopy, the fit out in it. Um, Which is all DIY. Yeah, correct. As well as I think um, the suspension was an eye opener. When I finally got the new suspension, it was just going over corrugation, all that. It was, it was just, it was just amazing. And the dog box, I guess that was, that was handy. Worst mod on the vehicle? It was probably my rooftop. That's the thing. It's the worst mod, but and the, the best. best mod. Yeah, it's. It, but it, it's it's more um, it's yeah it's given me more more grief than good at the moment. So, like I said, once I get a, a better model, better brand name one, I think that thing would be the best thing on this car by far. Okay. So you'd be prepared to, to go up in the four thousand, five thousand dollars. Correct. Bracket, yeah, that's that's the next knowing thing. Knowing that you do like it and yeah. you're going to get good quality. Mark my words. If mm -hmm. I knew how good they were when I bought it, I wouldn't have wasted the money and gone cheap from the get-go. I mm. wouldn't have, there's no way I would have went straight out and got the good one. So you agree with the old buy cheap, buy twice? Yeah, this is a prime example mm. of uh, me doing it wrong. <laughs> best part about the Amarok and the worst part, the vehicle itself? I think the best part is the amount of power it's got to how much fuel it uses. Um, I, that's the one thing I really like about it. I've had some powerful cars and full drives before, but this is for me is is exciting. Okay. Um, I haven't had that excitement in a car before, especially not a four-wheel drive. So I think the worst thing about this car is that because it's a, the the new V6 model, I can't get anything for it, and when I can, it costs too much, and it's not right. It's just they okay. just you know I, I, the the front recovery points are either I got to drill holes in the in the in the frame to make them fit or I gotta spend you know, ridiculous money. So mm. um, that's probably the biggest downfall with this car is, yeah, just but being- as the vehicle gets older. I, that I know, that I know, yeah. but by then but I think- you, you need I'd, it. I'd, I'd yeah. be onto my next car by the time they yeah. come out. That's my, that's the only downfall from it, so. Okay, so next next car, what would that be? Um, you know, I'd probably go a 79 if I, if I could afford it, to be honest. The history with these, with, with um, the problem that they have, compared to a 79 um, is chalk and cheese. It's, I, th I think this is good, it'll do everything I need it to do, but it's, it's still a bit pretty, if that makes sense. It's still a bit mm. brittle. Whereas um, they're not, I just feel they're not built tough, tough. They're tough, but they're not, you yeah. know, throw your shit in it, off you go and know that you'll be right. This, you still got to baby a bit, I feel. Yeah, so it's an Amarok without a C in it. <laughs> good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just adding it to what you're saying. Yes, yes. I'm not not ratting on Amarox at all, people. Don't don't jump on me. No. <laughs> yeah. ah, I'm very very pleased to have this Amarok on. Um, bloody good setup, mate. Thanks.
Um, a lot of thought went into it, a lot of time. Oh, yeah, definitely, I can tell that. And even just the cargo side, I, I like how it's just, you got all the tubs coloured and you got them in neat rows and it's so so easy, quick and easy to get out. And I, the reason I did go this one, because this, this is swappable for any full drive, so... Um, oh yeah. So this can easily be bolted off. It's got different legs for different models, mm. um, and that just bolts straight on. So this is uh, three, four hundred mil longer than it really should be. That's why I had the tow ball extended. Um, oh, so but you it's... fought ahead. Correct. You so this, keep this, set up. this will go straight on a '79 or any other car that I can ah. get. Um, I bought this with the car, so this has actually been modified with a mod plate for the extra length. Okay. That's the reason behind that. That oh, bolt. speaking. What's the best trip you've done in WA? The best trip I've done in WA was from here to Derby. Um, went up there for the uh, the Derby versus Broome fishing challenge, and uh, there was some just intense, crazy tracks through there, and um, some scary tracks, super scary tracks. If you if you've never been to the top end, the tides go from you know from oh, three yeah. meters up to 13 meters, and mm. um, I felt like a bit of a city slicker up there because I got stuck once, and it was it was it was scary. The tide was lapping at the at the wheels. Um, we just managed to get out about 30 minutes before the water went over the, it would have been where, over the roof of the car. The tides up there, they're pretty scary if they catch you out. Yeah, and it was, mate, it was a sideways waterfall. That's the only way mm. I could describe it, was the water came in. Like, like a tsunami. A, yeah, mate, it, it was, it just rushed in and when it did, it was, came in slow and then when it decided to turn, it mm. went from, you know, it went from just being a little bit of a creek to being a 200 metre wide bloody creek. It was, it was insane, it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, do not cross these creeks when it's king tides. Yeah, look, uh, I, I, I tend to think I'm a bit of a, a know-it-all sort of guy when it comes to, yeah, going out in the bush and full driving and stuff, but, yeah, that, I was that, definitely that was a, a city, call. yeah, that was a city slicker <laughs> move up there, I tell you, yeah. yeah. All right, final question, what's your favourite beer in WA? Because you're wearing an Eagle Bay brewing. <laughs> you know what, it is Eagle Bay, yeah. Oh, wow, there yeah, you go, there you go. Uh, um, I go down to Margaret River a lot, down to Gracetown, um, and we shoot in there every time, grab a box and... Nice. Have a good time down there. I've never actually tried them. Oh, really? I'll have to do it. Oh, you're missing out, mate. You're I'm missing out. I pretty much tried everything else. But... <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Thanks for bringing the Amarok on. Nah, all good, mate. Thank you. And, uh, oh, yeah, this is the first Amarok, so I can't say watch another Amarok down here. Watch uh, something else down here. Uh, over there, sorry. And <laughs> uh, where's the subscribe button going to be? Right there. And uh, patreon.com slash Ronnie Dale to help with more content creation. Cheers, guys. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers to the heat, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>